<laughs> I feel like I'm chopping a giant pineapple or something. This thing is huge. I'm Zachary Fowler, and that's Chris Thorne. And this is the 30 Day Survival Challenge, Texas. There's only one rule. If you want to eat, you got to catch and cook it. Uh, it's 5.30. I don't want to get out of bed, but nobody's ever gotten a deer or got a turkey while staying in bed sleeping. Here we go. All these titles are like reverse Star Wars, uh, Doug. Uh, and into the grayish brownish world of the early 80s. Queef! Bang! 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 Oh, God! You know, I could totally binge watch this guy. Oh, not the right sound. Oh, I could have been a clown. Ah, oh, they should have called it sadder things. Damn right, I'm the fairest of them all. I've never been so happy to see someone finish getting dressed. Yeah. Whoosh. Kagush. Choo. Skunk. Skunk. Queef. Kachink. Great. I can't tell if the set decorator didn't show up for work or is a genius. Is that a mashed potato sculpture or do you? Oh. Uh, you know those fall down, right? All right, and I'm off. And Cressy's still asleep. <laughs> All right, time to lock and load. This thing comes with a reloader for the arrows, but the butt of the knife works just fine. Scoop on. Good to go. Make the rest of our way down in here. I've already seen a lot of little deer running and jumping and stuff and doing their thing over the fence under the neighbors. We'll work our way down here. I can't Well, I think the wind is coming towards me, so that's a good thing. So I can come up on them. I've been down here before. The air rifle showed up one morning to do some early morning fishing. And sure enough, I came right face to face with a buck, like 30 feet away just stood there and stared at me because the wind was coming at me and he was just looking at me trying to figure out what I was. I feel like I should have left like a, like even 30 minutes earlier. I, I don't know. It's a long walk down here. And uh, I've seen a lot of deer already just running away from me a little further up. But this is where they're walking through a feeding last night. So hopefully I get a chance here. I hear turkeys. I hear turkeys over there too. And turkey's over there. Turkey for me, turkey for you, turkey in my big brown shoe. I love turkey at Thanksgiving. I got a good feeling about this morning. Lord bless my hunt. I'll make it a turkey and a deer right after. Let's see if I can't disguise the camera like an old woman. 
with the schmog. <laughs> Maybe that'll help a little. There we go. It's not as bad. I don't know how I missed that if I missed it over here but that looked like it ran off pretty easily like I didn't even wing it I know why I missed I wouldn't have missed if I had the right settings on the scope because I heard the turkeys coming in, I pulled the arrow out and I put in a slug and I wanted to get a turkey with a bullet from the air and I didn't change the settings on the scope. I have two different settings. One for arrows that works at low power and one for slugs at high power and so basically I just sent that shot just like sailing over his head without even hitting him even though I was aimed in on him ah, that's frustrating that's frustrating I finally get a chance at a turkey it's not over yet though it's all an opportunity to learn it's like the whole recording things and filming all this stuff all the time so many times at the beginning and even still now to this day sometimes I forget to hit record and I do something and it's not recorded so it's like it's like that. Now that I made a mistake like that, I will be very conscious of where my settings are. It's like, a, just, uh, that's what you get when, you, you know, I almost feel like that's, that's what you get when you get a multi-tool, you know? You got many options, but none of them are all perfect. It's better to have one tool that does one thing really well than a really cool tool that does multiple things more often than not. We'll get this figured out. I'll get my turkey, get my deer. <laughs> deer diary. Disappointing. I can't believe I missed that. I'm gonna go check on the fishuation, see if I'm doing any better there. Just if that group of turkeys had come in and had, oh man, if I had just shot. 
one shot. Ah, so. Ah. Well, I'm gonna get back to camp, get myself a cup of ever stew. That'll bring my spirits back up for sure. Best part of waking up is raccoon soup in your cup. Yeah. Back at camp. We go. I just piled up the coals, put some new stuff on top, good to go. Alright, this is taking too long. We got some of that rendered fat from last night's raccoon and we're frying up the crawdads and stuff in. This will get her going. Ah, don't want a spider in my coffee. Yeah, it smoke's blowing perfectly right over there to that raccoon. Once the fire's going, get my ever stew on, my coffee. And then after I get that raccoon back in the smoke so it preserves him. I think after drinking some of the ever stew today, we're gonna dump it, start all over with a fresh raccoon stew. It's been in oh I don't know, seven days of building up different parts of animals that we've rabbits and catfish and crawdads and possum and uh, all that stuff that's in there. My rattlesnake, I think actually we cleansed it after I got the rattlesnake and possum four, four days later and so now it's just raccoon, raccoon, catfish, crawdads, and rabbit. Ever stew. Well, after all that hunting this morning I was kind of hoping that I'd come back and that big buck would like wander through but he probably did that while I was over there. Done, soup is done. I really don't think people care. No, I think <laughs> I think the, the ones that care care. But the ones that care care, they don't think they leave comments as much. This is a behind the scenes conversation between Chris and myself about the negativity and overall lack of interest he was receiving in the comment section of those live streams we did while we were out there in November. And a little peek about us strategizing of how we're gonna title these and intro them. And the ones that care, 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 leave comments, and then they're like, oh, cool, I can't wait for the series, and blah, 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 or blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know? It doesn't matter, because this is all just foreplay. You know, when when the series comes out is when uh, and people see what's actually happening, and then be like, oh, that's cool. And there'll still be the same people. They'll be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. you're just do, doing an extended hunting trip, you know? And, and you know, and blah, blah, blah. And, It's what we say it is. It's the title. Our it's our title for our adventure, and with our rules. It is, you know, uh, that's not survival. You know, that's that's your opinion. This, we're doing what we said we're doing. I mean, we're we're building furniture to make our lives a little bit easier, and we're living out of hammocks. Like, if you don't call that a survival situation, and we're staying out here every night. Yeah. As far as I, I mean, I would call it survival training. 
It's, that's why it's a challenge. It's designed to say, okay, how long can you hang out? Yeah. 30 days is the is the, the end all be all for this challenge and that's, yeah, you're successful. But the whole thing is, can you hack it for 30 days? Yeah, we haven't broken the rules. You know, there was, the rules was there are no rules except for, um, you know, I'm gonna make that as part of my intro. It's gonna be like, there's only one rule. If you wanna eat, you gotta catch it and cook it. Da 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 da, spouse snake. Uh, da 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 uh, Guinea pig. You know, I know I'm not guinea pig, but you know what I mean. Raccoon in a cage and or crawdads and traps and little quick things and us eat. Just like yeah, I did I with. A, I need to make sure I have an intro. Mm. My DFS one's cool, but. Like something like he he, he, he always does like I would a, get rid of that thing for this. It's like gonna throw. It's just it's not uh, just like I got rid of all my like hypey stuff. Yeah. When I did the 87 days one, so I was like, I either want a really cool intro that is very 30 days centric, so everyone knows that each these episodes are the 30 days survival challenge for sure, or I want no intro at all. I'm trying to think of like titles because I know these videos are gonna be weird because there's gonna be some days where like you're doing like the bushcraft crawdad trap. That's a day that has nothing to do with me. That my day was a raccoon. I yeah, think. you got a raccoon. So, so trying to think of um, a series title, because I want something short, but I want people to be like, holy crap, I want I want to hit impact. And I get the whole 30 day survival challenge thing, but it's so long. It's like 60 characters by itself out of the 100 you're allowed to have. Yeah, but what are you going to do with the rest of the title? If it's catch and cook a raccoon, it's catch and cook a raccoon. Right? I mean, there's you don't need catch and cook a raccoon over a fire with smoke and and uh, wadobo yeah. and yeah. and chupacabra for three hours while eating crawfish, you know, or something. You know, it's like well, I'm trying to think of something that makes it like cohesive, but also can let certain episodes be still in themselves at the same time. If that makes any sense. TV shows get away with it. They're like the TV show is called Grimm, then it's like season one, then it's episode twelve, but then the episode has like a name. It's like bam, whatever that is. I was like, ah. Ooh, score. Look at that big old chunk of raccoon. Ooh, a little bit of rabbit. You never know what you're gonna find in here. You gotta dig for the treasure. <laughs> It looks, it doesn't look exactly appetizing, maybe, to some of you, but uh, this is uh, full of life-giving energy right here. Yummy. Oh, that's good. That hits a spot. Soup. Mmm. Yeehaw. The fat also makes a really good uh, beard oil. Oh yeah, Great. just take some of this right out of here and just start putting it into yeah. my beard. It's excellent. Ah, yum. You basically just smell like wadobo all day, so it's great. Ladies love it. Yeah. Because I run into a lot of ladies out here in the woods. That sounded like denigrating. I mean like like here literally I don't run into a lot of ladies. I mean that not hole. that not that ladies don't go out into the woods all that often. I mean it'll be a lot easier with that. They do, but uh, I just smell the tears of all the people like, that are burying you. Right survival now. Lily, she goes out into the woods. <laughs> I mean Hey, look at that. And we just found some treasure. What did we find? Tell them what we won. Oh, this is the most amazing plant in all of Texas. We gotta sneak up on the wild agave before it, before, just in case it doesn't get startled. If it's startled, it'll run off. What do you think? Do you, do you know about these? I do. I do know a few things about these. So, these are the um, wild agave. They are native to Texas. There are several different species out there. And as large as this plant looks, this is actually only a couple years old. These have a lifespan of about seven to eight years and they get much, much, much bigger. 
Now, what makes these so special is yes, for anybody who's a uh, liquor connoisseur out there does know that a blue agave is what is made to make tequila. However, in a survival situation, you find a really big one of these, I'm talking about two or three times as big, just a big massive plant. You can actually harvest these by stripping off, off the leaves, think like an artichoke heart. And that's basically what you've got. You've got a desert artichoke, as, as it were. It has a lot of complex carbohydrates, lots of sugars, and a boatload of calories. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. I think this one's the biggest. Let's snag that one. Yes. That one's pretty that is, big. Yeah, that, this is a really good size. Ow, that is sharp. Oh yeah, their, their needles are incredibly sharp. And it's kind of tricky, but the calorie return we're gonna get on this is gonna be pretty substantial. Oh yeah, you could definitely make some needle points out of that for sure. Even though we harvest this big main one, it always goes through and replicates itself and grows its own, basically its children. I think I should have brought a bigger shovel. I was like, I wasn't planning on harvesting. Loves a big shovel, it should be good to go. We just uh, knock the horns off it and then we toss it in the fire. <laughs> basically. But it takes a long time to roast. What do you think? Shut, shut the, uh, just hack them off? Yeah, just hack them off. You basically are keeping the heart underground. Oh, it's all the way underground? Mostly. Nice. So, they're very fibery, and you see that needle at the end. I've been told, too, that if you play your cards right, you got those fibery strands, and they stay attached right to the needle. If you keep working it down, you can stop, and you have several fibrous strands attached right to your sewing needle and you can stitch with it. That's kind of neat. Yep, it's natural needle and thread built into a plant naturally. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You definitely want to look for the straighter needles, but yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. Like a desert version of a uh, witch's hat. Ah, like it's really like ugly, it's like <laughs> a really ugly pineapple. Like Dumbledore's cap. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's free. There. All right. I got my dinner. What are you gonna get? I take this back to camp. <laughs> I'm gonna start wearing them like this. It's gonna be all the rage in Paris. You watch. Six months from now, everybody's gonna be doing it. So fancy. He's talking, I'm gonna go and nut. Oh man. Woo! This thing's heavy. That thing is huge. I'll we'll grab my machete and clean this puppy up. There we go. All right, so what do I gotta do to trim this up without ruining my table? I don't know how far to take it exactly. <laughs> I feel like I'm chopping a giant pineapple or something. This thing is huge. This is one of those uh, hold my uh, hold, hold my, my beer moments. And hold. <laughs> here, here we go in one shot. What what do I get if I get it in one shot? I'll let you have the I first get, bite. I get the first bite. Oh, that was easier than I thought it was. <laughs> and it's look at the end of that. Let's try one more. Like how thin of a all right, quarter inch slice all the way through. This is the sharpest knife in the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hey, you made agave rings, like O-rings. Yeah, they come off like onions. Look at that. <laughs> there you go. It slices, it dices. 
It makes it Julian's. It. What, what else does it do? <laughs> the heart of the heart of what I just chopped off. Doesn't taste sweet. Nope. It just tastes like a. That's why we have to cook it. That's what brings it out. A really hard, fibrous. I mean, there's this touch of sweetness to it, but it's kind of like uh, onions with the complex carbohydrates when it caramelizes and it sweetens up afterwards. It's yeah, because it does not taste very sweet right now. No, no. It just tastes like I ate a like a fibery something in my mouth. Should we chop the root end off too? Uh, probably. Yeah. You just knock the horns off her and toss her in the fire. Three days later. <laughs> there we go, it's as easy as that. Cook for 24 hours and check your internal temperature and make sure it's at least 123 degrees or your agave won't be cooked all the way through. <laughs> oh, look at all the carnage. That poor thing. Oh. All right, here we go. Off on another evening adventure of hunt. Tried to do a gopher trap. I just couldn't wrap my mind around something I thought that would work, so I just I scrapped it and decided maybe I'll come back to that. Let's see if we can't get out there, get in position, and get myself a deer or a turkey. Next time on 30 Day Survival Challenge, Texas. Chris, you okay? You know that puking out of your system? Chris, he's not in there. Huh. Uh, I wonder if he got up early. I didn't hear anything. He never gets up before me. I wonder if he bailed in the night. Hope he's okay. He was just, I heard him puking, but. I didn't know he would, uh, huh. All right, I am in for the night. Oh, I am so beat. Up at 5.30, all kinds of, oh, traipsing around. I must have put on 10 miles today in an effort to catch one of them, get one of them deers, stinkers, hiding from me. So many times I had them, like some, and not enough to, get a shot you know or they're too small and, and they're just slipping away but that's why I'm going to bed and getting up early there's still plenty of time for it tomorrow before moving day so I will oh, I'll catch you all tomorrow thanks for watching Fowler out